Start with the usual uh, eight inch on the left. Uh, it's about where I want it to. Let's uh, let's for kicks try the uh, the plates. Snappy little gun. Yeah, four shots left. Let's go with the silhouette. I hate to start a video this way, but for the YouTube manual reviewers, this is not a modified firearm. This is completely factory stock, just the way it came from the factory. And I'll post a picture here taken from the manufacturer's website. So this is not a modified firearm. We are on a dedicated shooting range. Everything is complying with all of the YouTube guidelines and community standards. So please do not demonetize this video. So having gotten that out of the way, let's talk about this Kimber R7 Mako and take some first shots out here on Rider's Range. <laughs> All right, the Kimber Mako, or the R7 Mako, uh, departure from normal Kimber firearms. Of course, Kimber is uh, most noted for their 1911-style pistols and also uh, very fine rifles. Uh, they did enter into the striker-fired market a couple of times uh, with uh, mixed success. So, but this is their first polymer frame, uh, as far as I know anyway, polymer frame striker-fired pistol. Comes with two magazines, finally, uh, a flush fit 10 round uh, or 11 round magazine which gives you 11 plus one and a slightly extended magazine and again this is not a modification youtube manual reviewers and this is a 13 round magazine to give you a total capacity obviously of uh, 13 plus one or 14 rounds so it does come with two uh, i would really like to have some more magazines but um, everywhere i look they are not available out of stock 39.99 for the 13 round i think 35.99 for the uh, 11 round magazine uh, so at some point i'll Get a couple more. We're going to uh, shoot this thing at first at 12 yards here just to see how it works and then we'll talk about more on this uh, Kimber Mako. We're going to put the first shots uh, this uh, uh, Federal uh, Syntec 150 grain here at 12 yards just to see how it'll work on the plates. Start with the white 8 inch there on the left and let's do the black plates. And of course, we got a couple left. Let's go back to the silhouette. All right, so far so good. Uh, let's uh, move it out to 25 yards and we'll talk a little bit more about it uh, right after we shoot 25 yards with this Kimber Mako. All right, let's see if I can hit something over here at 25 yards. Still using that uh, 150 grain Federal Syntec. Start with the black 12 inch on the left. Let's go to the white eight inch next to it. Let's do the head flipper on that black side. Now, oh, settle in. Let's do it again. See if I, oh, hit it right toward the hinge. Let's see if I can get it back. Hitting it, but these syntax aren't moving it much. You need to hit it just a little farther out, it looks like. <laughs> now it's stuck in the middle. Let's go to the six inch on the right. And back to that silhouette, see if I can knock that head loose. The answer is no. Slide does stay back after the last shot, certainly on the uh, extended magazine. Again, this is the uh, uh, Crimson Trace 1500 with a 5 MOA dot. Now, I'm not uh, the Crimson Trace on their website shows a 1550. They don't show the 1500 anymore. I don't know what the difference is. This does take the Shield uh, RMSC uh, or the Micro Red Dot footprint. And uh, you can get this um, R7 Mako with or without the optic. You can get it optics ready. Uh, and that, uh, I think, catalogs for somewhere around uh, 600. And uh, with the optic, is about eight. I've seen these online. Actually, I saw one go on Gunbroker for over 1,000. Uh, but I've actually seen uh, sites online where you can pick up this with the optic for uh, in the neighborhood of um, uh, 700 instead of 800. Those have co-witnessed night sights, uh, two dot rear, uh, high vis. A red front, but again, it is a or orange. It is a, still a night sight. Does co-witness very nicely with the with the optic on this. Um, I, when I got this, I have seen optics come loose before, so I put the uh, Wheeler Fat Wrench on here, and uh, I normally torque to at least 15 inch pounds. 
uh, sometimes 20 if the manufacturer calls for it. There's no specs in the Kimber catalog on it. So um, I started cranking this thing down and uh, it wasn't even at 10 inch pounds. So I finally uh, had to tighten it down to 15. So if you get a Kimber Mako that does have uh, the Crimson Trace on it, check the, um, uh, the two mounting screws to make sure that it is mounted. This uh, does have the performance carry trigger. By the way, it is unloaded as you can see. And um, Kimber says it's between five and six and three quarters pounds. Uh, I measure this thing out at uh, three pounds, 12 ounces all day long. Very nice trigger. It's a very short throw and a very clean, crisp break. The trigger is somewhat similar to the, uh, the feel of the Evo. Um, and that's also a striker fire gun, a little different design, of course. But uh, it, it has that same kind of feel. I think the Evo, though, is, uh, is even just a little bit lighter than this. It does have uh, ambidextrous slide stop lever. Also, uh, just like they had on their Solo, an ambidextrous magazine release. You don't have to switch it over. It'll release the magazine from either side. It was a nice touch on the Solo. It's certainly nice on this. Uh, good grip texture all the way around, including extending up the side of the frame and um, front of the, the grip, back of the grip. You can't change the grip module, of course, on it, but it does have good feel. Slide serrations, if you wish to uh, do a press check, they're front and rear. They aren't super aggressive. The, the front cocking serrations are not what I would call super aggressive at all, uh, although you can certainly work this thing by also working the, uh, uh, the optic on it. Frame is a glass-filled nylon uh, type of polymer, of course, and uh, so far it seems to be fairly rigid. It's got palm swells in the, uh, the grip itself and uh, got a good feel to it. The slide is uh, stainless with an FNC finish, whatever that is, and interesting on the slide that it does not have the ejection port exposed on the top. Um, that's actually, a, a, I think, a nice design because I've got several guns with optics and I like to gun, run my guns a little bit wet and sometimes I get oil up on the optic. Not a real good thing. I get debris sometimes blowing back there. It does have a tendency to eventually get on the, the lens. Doesn't necessarily impede the, uh, the visual through it, but still kind of annoying to get that on there. So having uh, that shroud so far has kept it uh, pretty clean. Now we've only fired, uh, what, um, 25 shots out of it so far, but uh, uh, there's no debris at all on the front of the lens. 3.7 inch barrel, thing weighs in at just under 20 ounces empty. I haven't gotten a loaded weight. We're gonna do more on a, on a full uh, review on this after I get some more uh, shots through it and some more trigger time with it. And uh, we'll do a, a full review at some point. Right now, let's just set the cameras up for 50 yards and see how it's gonna work out there. All right, we're going to run this uh, Kimber R7 Mako with 150 grain Federal Syntec out to 100 yards. Let uh, <laughs> No, out to 50 yards. Let's see if I, I wish I had a 100 yard range. Let's see if I can actually hit something out there with it. Uh, start with the green six, or the white 16 inch with a green center. Uh, it looks like that hit it a little to the right side. Let's try the uh, six, uh, 12 inch right below it. Okay. Uh, 10 inch white with a black center, high left. All right, how about the eight inch below it, white with a red center? All right, there's a white six inch just to the left of that. Can I get a six? All right, I'm not gonna argue with that. The uh, silver gong, of course, will sound good. Let's go back to that 16 inch again. And the gong again. 16 inch. Back to the gong. One more time on the gong. There it is, the Kimber R7 Mako. First shots out here in Rider's Range. We're going to spend some more time with it, but so far, I do kind of like it. We'll uh, see how it shakes out in the long run. So that's a relatively quick look at the Kimber R7 Mako. At least I hope it was quick. And uh, we'll uh, do a more in depth review coming up. So, so far, I'm pleased with it. Thanks for stopping in.